Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Will and today we're going to be talking about diesel heaters, specifically the Chinese diesel heater because I have one installed in my van. But prior to installing this diesel heater, there was a plethora of different choices out there. For instance, a lot of you guys have the My Buddy heater. I think it uses propane. There are some small tiny little electric ones that use anywhere between 100 to 200 watts. And then there are people who don't want any type of heater, but then they get those blankets that warm up with an AC adapter or a 12 volt adapter. I reviewed all my choices before I made the decision to buy the Chinese diesel heater. And for the price point that the Chinese diesel heaters are being offered for, I thought it was an absolute bargain. So you may or may not know this, but the Chinese diesel heaters are an exact replica, or I should say as close to the Wabasto heaters that are made in Germany that probably cost about 10 times more than the Chinese diesel heater. So in deciding which one to get, the obvious choice was the Chinese diesel heater. I looked at a ton of different reviews. I noticed that people were having issues, but those issues were boiled down to two fundamental things. Number one, they were using the cheap plastic tubing that was included with the heaters. And number two, the clamps that were included they're just not good enough. So I had those two things replaced as well, which is something that we're gonna be talking about in this video. Before I bought the Chinese diesel heater, I watched in excess of probably 10 to 20 different videos. Uh, people who have owned them for over a year, people that just bought them, a ton of installation videos. And I realized that this thing ran pretty much trouble free for most people that owned it. They never had an issue. And the people that did have issues, they were linked to some of the things that I made sure that I was proactive about prior to installation. And some of those things are the hoses. And so instead of using the hose that comes with it, which is the blue green one, which is very flexible, uh, that hose, as fuel goes into it, it expands. And as a result of that, you get an E08 error. And an E08 error basically means that the heater is not getting enough fuel. There's gonna be small little pockets of air inside the tubing. And this is the reason for it. So before I bought this, like I said, I did a ton of research and then and I ordered the plastic tubing that is very rigid and it's a little bit thinner. And I bought that off of Amazon along with the heater. The other thing that I did correctly was I bought better clamps, but they are much better than the ones that are provided between the diesel heater and the fuel tank. There are many things that can go wrong and it pretty much boils down to the wiring as well as the clamps. And of course, if you're gonna run it from the front of your van all the way to the back, you wanna make sure that you get thick gauge wiring. So my van, as you already know, is a pretty compact van. It's a Dodge Ram Promaster City van. I bought this van brand new, it's a 2021. So for me to make any modifications to the van, I had to absolutely make sure that it was done correctly and it was done at a, at a place where I would not change my mind and it would go very smoothly. I decided to put the diesel heater in front of the van, or I should say in the middle, right behind me here, because that was the only logical place after the Cascade Camper build out. Behind the bed, there's really not that much space except for a little bit of storage. By the cabinets where the refrigerator is and the sink is, there's no room behind it at all. They use the space very, very intelligently, so there's, there's no wasted space at all. Towards the side of the couch, by where the back doors open, there's absolutely no room in there as well. So I thought the best place and the most logical place would be right behind my driver's seat. However, it did come with a couple of challenges because this is the Tradesman Edition uh, Promaster City Van. The family version, or I guess you can say the people carrier version, has seats and it also has passenger footwells. So the Tradesman Edition goes over those passenger footwells, but underneath of it, still remains empty so we had to make a cutout where the floor is and the floor is pretty thick it's about an inch i would say an inch of solid wood and underneath the flooring is going to be the base of the passenger footwell so we had to cut through two different layers and then once we cut between those two layers we had to cut through another layer uh, going below the vehicle as well so before i actually did all this stuff I made a mock-up of what this thing was going to look like. The small plate that the diesel heater provided is pretty much standard, but we had to cut it down on the left and right side just so we could make it fit right next to the bed slash couch. That was sanded down afterwards, and after we sanded that down, I made a couple of mock-ups with a piece of cardboard, a couple of screws, and 
uh, two posts. I believe they're about an inch high. And I put it all together to see if it will fit correctly. So once I made that little mock-up, I was pretty confident that this was going to work out. But I was still very nervous about drilling into the floor. You can only get it right once. There, there is no going back after you make these holes. One of the challenges I faced, the exhaust tube wasn't long enough. So what I decided to do is I, I bought an extension for the exhaust and I got that connected and I routed it all the way to the right side of the van. So the exhaust is pointing this way and the intake is pointing this way and they're far apart from each other. And that's exactly what I wanted. Now I'm sure you hear all the time that the clicking sound from the fuel pump is pretty loud. It's something you can't really sleep with. Although I don't plan to sleep with this at night, Depends on where I am actually because I, I do plan to uh, travel to colder climates But uh, at night for now in San Diego, I really don't sleep with it. It doesn't really get that cold out I do wake up sometimes because I get really cold and I notice that the, do that the dog is cold as well And I do turn it on But I decided to put the fuel pump on the bottom of the car instead of inside the car and I wrapped it up with some kind of foam padding so this way it can muffle the sound even more and the vibrations don't go, don't go through the car. So far I've done about 4,700 miles with this car since I bought it brand new and I've had the diesel heater on I believe after 1,000 miles of owning this car. And through all my driving and through all my adventures that I've been through with this car already, so far it's held up pretty well. I turn on the diesel heater probably about two to three times per day. Um, I kind of spoil myself. I'm spoiled now. Uh, if it gets a little bit chilly, I do turn it on. It doesn't use a lot of fuel, and that's one of the great benefits of it. A couple of things that you might be curious about. I watched a video on YouTube, and I will link it down in the description below as well. And I learned that on startup, the diesel heater uses anywhere between 100 to 130 watts of power and it's somewhere around 12 to 13 amps on startup for the first, I would say, five minutes. And then after those five minutes, it uses somewhere around seven to nine watts, which is about 0.7 to 0.9 amps. Not only is it very, very efficient, but it uses very low fuel, and it's something that you can use for hours without having to worry about it draining your battery. Now, I haven't really experimented with having this thing on for five to 10 hours straight, but I have had it on for maybe two to three hours at a time, especially if I wake up at night and it's like four or five o'clock in the morning and I get cold. I do turn it on and then at seven o'clock when my alarm rings, I turn it off. So far, it's been working pretty well. At night, it's really quiet. I don't hear it. The ticking sound, considering that everything else around me is pretty quiet, I still hear. But I can only imagine if I had the fuel pump inside the car, that sound would be five times louder. So that's one of my recommendations for you. If you do get this installed, make sure that the fuel pump is below your vehicle, not inside your vehicle. So now it's been about two to three months since I've owned this diesel heater and I use it probably about two, three times a day. Would I buy it again? Absolutely. For $180 on Amazon, along with, uh, with the $20, $30 fuel line, as well as uh, the clamps, I think it's absolutely worth it. I would definitely buy this again. It's been three months. I've had absolutely zero issues, and it's something that I recommend for everyone. Um, if you have the coin and you want to spend big money, then the Wabasto slash Espar heaters, I think those are the two major manufacturers that came out before the Chinese diesel heaters. If you have the coin for it, by all means, buy what you can afford. But if you're like me and the vast majority of us, then I think the Chinese diesel heater is something that you can definitely depend on, as I have been. I'm full-time in my van, and I just, I honestly, I, I, at this point, I can't live without the, the heater. It's something that I've come used to, and it's something that I won't live without. As far as the little buddy heater and the electric heaters, to be honest with you, I've heard a lot of good things, and I've heard a lot of bad things about them. And long-term, I don't think they're, they're the solution. I think long-term... These diesel heaters are the solution. Not only is it efficient, but it's also cheap as well. So I will put a link down in the description below for my heater as well as, as, well as all the accessories that I purchased. And if you're interested, take a look at the description down below and you'll find it over there. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll answer it for you. But until the next episode, I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you enjoyed my content and you wanna see more of it, please do me a favor, 
and also subscribe to my channel. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Till next time.